Today, I'm at a games company who have made their name with some of the biggest driving games around. Including Need for Speed Most Wanted, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, as well as the seminal Burnout series. Hi James. Hi Kim. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, where are we? Yeah, welcome to uh, EA. This is the home of Criterion Games. So awesome. I'll, I'll take you through and then we'll take a tour of the studio. Sweet. My guide for the day is designer James Spenson. Wow. Good after you. Thank you. It's really open here. Yeah, we've made a big change. He has set up a unique challenge at Criterion. Many of the staff have stopped working on their main projects to compete in a hackathon. Three teams of three or more have just two days to create a game from scratch. So we've got three teams and this is day two of our game jam. Mm -hmm. And these teams are just working to come up with the best concept and execute it in as short a time as possible. Okay, and what's the purpose of it? Hackathons and game jams are really important because then you can really get stuck in a rut on um, making something very, very complex, whereas hackathons really force you to think creatively about what's the quickest way I can come up with a cool solution to get this done. And have you seen anything emerge from all the teams so far, like what kind of route they've gone down? Yeah, each team's gone down a really different route. It's really interesting. So over here we've got uh, Powerful, which is all about power and platforms, mm -hmm. and so that's a 2D, a fully 2D game. And then Joe, he's, he's one of our level designers. Andy is an awesome animator. And then we've got Mikhail, who's doing this killer concept wow. art. Wow. So this looks really gorgeous. Do you think you have time to get it into the game? That's a challenge, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's quite hard to get this in quickly. Mm -hmm. So I've done a really rough version, which we were trying to get in the game just now. It's really just a blocky guy running. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like adding some states for when he's running, when he's jumping, and when he gets electrocuted, when he lands on a platform. Oh, no. Um, so what programs are you using to create this? Well, I've been using a little bit of Flash and, and Photoshop just to do like really low res pixel art. Flash, you can do some really simple animation very quickly, mm -hmm. and that's everything has to be done very quickly today. So maybe you need some of the you know like little blue lines or something like yes, that going over him. Off. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be nice to have him dissolve into dust. That would be amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Six hours left, and the powerful team still have a lot to do. But the next team is almost finished. They've created a game called Electric Sheep. You have to uh, wrangle the sheep into the power plant over here. And okay. we do that by pushing it up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, OK, that's cool. And I electrocute the sheep. And if they hit you too many times, then you die like this. Yeah, you, you kind of start with the simplest the game can be to win. So the, the simplest mechanic you put in first, and then you put in the next mechanic on top of that. So that you've always got something that you're playing at any one time. Yeah. So if, if we run out of time, you've still got something to show at the end of it, otherwise you end up with something horrible and project. I'm also really impressed with Teddy Pit, a 3D game created by the third and final team. The level of detail they've achieved in just over a day is staggering. But I'm wondering if the gameplay lives up to the way it looks. Okay, so what you've got to do is uh, take out these teddy bears that are coming to grab the honey pots. Um, okay. So they're going to aim straight for those things, so if you hang around them, you can guard them. So if you spin that stick around, you can get some momentum going. Spin, spin, spin. <laughs> Good, are you getting the hang of it? But it's all about the experience, right? We want this teddy bear massacre pit sort of uh, atmosphere going on, so... Mike it was able to kind of create an environment really quickly, just kind of get some shapes down so we could start working, and then very quickly we already had the assets for the teddy bears, so we just started putting some animation on those, getting the controller working, and then it was... We all kind of took our own like areas and started working on stuff, and then Max then started asking everything, so that the art then came in later, but we were working on gameplay mechanics first and then making it look pretty afterwards. So what is it you're doing over here? Well right now I've started um, putting some sounds into the game to make it feel more alive like a crowd ambience and just finding a bunch of death sounds <laughs> and, we'll, and then we'll pitch shift them to make them sound a little bit more teddy friendly. But. So does doing a hackathon um, kind of get you back to the roots of why you got into games, in, games development in the first place? Definitely. I think we'd all agree on that one. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, yeah, when I was a kid, I, I was making games all the time on something called Click and Play, and this is just like the next evolution of that. Mm -hmm. How's that looking? OK, guys, you've got about 10 minutes left. How's it looking? It's getting all right, actually. Yeah? Those things we still want to do, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, the main experience is there. Yeah, it's looking pretty awesome, and I love the Hulk Hogan stash on the bear. <laughs>
With time running out, one of the teams has run into problems. So the other two teams have finished and these guys are scrambling to put their last touches in as the seconds tick down. Yeah. Okay guys, so you've got a few minutes left. How's it going? Very tight. Yeah, we're getting some mistakes, right? Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. We uh, had some trouble with animation. So. Yeah, we made some. Yeah, we, we kind of started to implement quite a few extra features with, mm -hmm. with some art quite late. Slightly scrabbling to get the gameplay done at the last minute now. So, this is two days of work coming down to these frantic last seconds. Nat, time's up. All right, guys, that's time. Yeah, so first we're going to meet the judges. This is a competition and there are winners. OK, judges, so what are you guys going to be looking for in these games? Well, I think first and foremost, it's got to be about the fun. Mm -hmm. you know, these experiences just no going to get you enjoying the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yourself? Yeah, for me, it's solid game loops and great audio. After the blood, sweat and laughter of creating a fully functioning game in just two days, each team must now allow the judges to explore their game, to see how playable it is. There ain't nothing wrong with that, that's a good game. I love this week. So the ultimate question on everyone's lips, who's going to be the winner? I have to go ultimately on the fun factor and which one do I most want another go at? So. So it has to be Teddy Pit. Say so the same thing. Um, for me, like I say, it was all about the fun and the solid game loops. And for me, the one I want to play again is Teddy Pit. Not so all three yeah, teams, yeah. 12 yeah. hours each. That is yeah, so that is yeah. awesome work. So what happened to that amazing art? It, it didn't make it to the final game. We decided to go for features and gameplay loops. It, if you managed to get that art in, do you think you would have maybe won? Uh, we might have stood a better chance because the art, yeah, it was really, really good art there, but we just didn't have time to implement them. Hackathons that help to inspire console development teams are also a reminder to any wannabe game developers to keep things simple and have a clear focus.